Hello and welcome to 18 WJTS Inform. I'm your host, Bill Potter. Again, joining us on our Friday, it is State Senator Mark Mesmer, as we'll be discussing events that have happened in the state legislation this mm -hmm. week. Uh, and Senator, welcome to the show. Great to be here, as always. We're glad to have you. Now, this, I guess, uh, was a week of a lot of activity, but no no results. Co correct. So th this was our the first week of, of transitioning bills from the House to the Senate and Senate to the House. So there was a ton of committee hearings. A lot of bills, you know, process and committee. Uh, very few. We had two bills that were, you know, that had uh, were up for am the amending phase um, in the Senate on Thursday. No amendment, no amendments were offered. But uh, you mean know, probably dozens, if not, you know, between House and Senate, hundreds of bills heard this week. But until they start, you know, getting to the floor and getting, you know, getting a little further on the process, it was a uh, a hectic, busy week with not a lot to show for it. <laughs> I think you had called that a transition week. It is transition week. This was transition week. week. Yes, yes. Okay. Is that an official title? Is uh, that an official I'll, name? That's what I'm going to oh, okay. use. Okay. We're going to use it. All right. You uh, wanted to talk about three bills uh, that, that did have some activity. Yep. So, la so last week last week we talked about the, the all the health care you know, bills, the priority bills that we had from the Senate. And, and there was a few that I looked at uh, that were priority issues also that we worked on in the Senate that I just wanted to make sure you know the folks in our viewing area uh, knew, knew the status of them and, and what, what, what else we had worked on. So a priority, and I think there's House and Senate bills both dealing with this. Uh, Senate Bill 1 is uh, raising the smoking and vaping age to, to 21. And the federal government uh, made that change in December in, in one of their end-of-year budget bills. They put the smoking age uh, raise you know, to 21 at the federal level. And you, and you say, well, if the federal feds did it, you know, why do you guys need to do it? Um, the, and the, the difference would be <clears throat> if we don't have any state laws uh, that, that cover the, the same issue, there's no way to enforce it. You'd be counting on somebody from the federal government to, to come in and, and you know, do, do inspections and do follow-up, and, and it's just not going to happen. There is no federal agency with the, you know, with the ability to, to police it. Mm -hmm. So the, the Alcohol Tobacco Commission in Indiana is the group that already, um, you know, does, you know, um, policing of, you know, of underage, underage sales of alcohol and, and tobacco, you know, for people that are 18 and older now. Uh, it would, that same group would do the, you know, the monitoring of, of the age 21. Uh, the process of, of, you know, enforcement and fining and all that, the b basic structures all stay the same, just with raising the age. Uh, but in this transition year of raising the age, they are going to, Increase the penalties, you know, for enforcement, just to get the attention of the retailers to make sure that they they're you know diligently uh, checking for IDs and all that. Um, and like I said, ours is Senate Bill One. There's a House bill moving that's got some of the same same criteria in it. The only difference is currently, if you have three violations within the last six months, you know, you could potentially lose your your license to sell tobacco. Uh, the House extends that for if you have three violations looking back two years. And, and so that, that's got the retailers a little, a little uncomfortable because a two-year period for three violations is, is a whole lot more uh, strenuous to, to comply with than, you know, than the six-month window we have now. So I would, I would expect the final you know, bill of that to be more you know, similar to what we've got in the Senate bill, not the House version. Um, another a uh, key priority for us was uh, looking for, for ways to let small business owners take, take better, um, better use of what they call the business personal property uh, deduction. And you say, what the heck is that? So if you have office equipment, furniture, if you're a manufacturer, if you have manufacturing equipment, uh, it's, it's got property tax that's assessed on, on, uh, on that equipment and it's called business personal property. It's, I mean, if it's a, if it's a structure, it's called you know, real property. If it's the equipment in the building, it's called personal property. Okay. So uh, previously, and there's a 30%, you know, once, that, uh, once that item you know, gets down to 30% of its value, th that's the, you know, the bottom floor of, of where your, your taxation stops once it gets down to 30% of, of its value. Uh, the change this year in Senate Bill 385 allows you to have some depreciation of that asset factored into when they do the calculation. So it's still got the 30% floor, but as, as, as equipment depreciates, it allows that calculation to be a little bit lower. And, and 
I think statewide it's about a $20 million impact. I mean, the, the total business personal property uh, taxation to the, to the counties across the state is about a billion dollars. This, by, by putting depreciation into that calculation process, it, it lowers it about 20 million. So not a huge amount, but for small business owners, it would have more, you know, more direct impact than if you're a, you know, a company like, you know, Kimball or Master Brand. That's probably not gonna, you know, that, that difference might not be a big deal, but if you're a small business owner and it's a, you know, a few hundred bucks or a thousand bucks, mm -hmm. you know, it, it could be significant, you know, to them. So that, that's a, and we keep trying to look at ways to, you know, you know, improve the business climate for small business owners, you know, specifically in the state, because that's the, really the bulk of the employers and businesses are small businesses across Indiana and across the country. Uh, and then Senate Bill 184, um, we, were, we were approached uh, by uh, Farm Bureau, a lot of their members, you know, if you're a, a family farmer and you've got, you know, just yourself or yourself and one employee, there is no commercial um, health insurance available for you as an individual or an individual with one employee. If you have two employees, there's commercial you know, policies out there that you can you know, go out and buy. Uh, but when you're, you know, when you're either a sole proprietor or sole proprietor with one employee, there's nothing on the market. So Tennessee has had it. It's not uh, exact, it's not health insurance, but it's a, it's a, it's a health benefits plan that uh, Tennessee Farm Bureau has had in place for about 40 years. So we're, you know, we're working directly with, you know, the, the Farm Bureau folks in, in Tennessee to, to get that, that program set up. So if you're a, a, a farmer in Indiana, and there were thousands of them that, that responded to the survey um, this past year with Farm Bureau Insurance, it would allow them to have a health, a health uh, benefits plan that gives them coverage, you know, that, that it's close to, you know, traditional insurance, but it, it doesn't have all the, you know, the federal uh, requirements that insurance policies have to have. I guess it would be it would be probably similar to the to the health share plans that a lot of uh, religious groups offer. Uh, but it is it it would be you know, actuarially uh, you know rate assessed by Farm Bureau. It's 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 got enough history in Tennessee, you know, that they know how to price it and and you know, what kind of benefits it would have. It would it would still have you know, some 80-20 you know copayments and deductibles. I mean it have. A lot of the same functions as insurance, but it's it's not technically an insurance product, so they can't they can't advertise it as you know as insurance. But you know we've we've got disclosure requirements that that people that are buying it would have to make sure they know what they're getting. Um, but that that one passed the the, the Senate by I, I think it was probably almost unanimously. I think it might have been unanimously, and is and is off to the House for consideration. And I, and I did see that it's it's been scheduled on the House Insurance Committee as well. So I'm one of the co-authors of that bill. So very pleased to see that one uh, moving forward. Now, tomorrow mm -hmm. is the uh, Jasper Chamber of Commerce Legislative mm -hmm. Breakfast, yep. um, which really is kind of like orange yeah. juicing, you I, know, and, I think and water, have, but it's yeah, not... Oh, well, I think they have gran granola yeah, bars Yeah, they do have, you're right, they do, <laughs> and I think bananas as well. And, okay. Uh, so if somebody's hungry, they can, mm -hmm. there will be some food to eat. Right. Uh, but it's great that the Jasper Chamber does this because it's an opportunity for folks to come in and sit and listen to you talk mm -hmm. and then ask you some questions mm -hmm. or write down the questions right. and, and, and mm -hmm. get asked. Uh, that is, you want to give the details on that? That's That'll tomorrow. be at the, the Vincent University CTAM building, mm -hmm. the, the newest uh, technology building there on campus. Uh, they've got a nice auditorium on the main floor. Uh, it'll start at 9 o'clock and it'll get done at 10.30. And, and I'll need to be out the door as close to 10.30 as possible because I have another one of these events down in uh, Christney tomorrow. Okay, so. Yeah, because Spencer County does the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, that's, all, that's open to the public, mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. uh, and WJTS is there. Peter will be there to film that and we'll be showing that next week. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for coming in once You're again. Welcome. We My always appreciate you coming in. Yep. Uh, and good to see things happening in the legislation. Well, and next week we'll have some House bills that have been acted upon. And as some of my bills start moving out of committee, we can give some further reports, reports on those. Perfect. Thank you, Senator, You're for coming welcome. in. My pleasure. Our guest has been State Senator Mark Mesmer, who represents us in this district uh, at the state legislature. He just comes in on Fridays and dis discusses what happens in legislation. Thank you for watching 18WJTS. We're local people watching local people.